so much money to keep them here when they could be spending it on other things. At least they're keeping them separate from us. Welcome to Question Entertainment. I'm Christopher Ouellette. And I'm Abby Rooney, and today we're talking about... District 9 is a mock documentary about a South African town where a slum has developed due to a spaceship stalling over their city and the aliens being extracted from it. These bug-like creatures are now the cause of some social problems as well as fodder for local gangs. So how was it? It was very unique. When everybody says alien movie, oh, <laughs> alien movie. It really wasn't like any other. No, alien no, this movie was very ever. original. And the whole documentary style yes. that they used for it, it was, I just I loved it. Yeah, some of the beginning of it looked like it was shot on a cell phone. But then a yeah. billion dollars worth of special effects shot on a cell phone. It was yeah. it was sweet. I liked it. Yeah. And it, it was like, where are they going with this? Yes. Nobody expected what would happen next. Once it was done, I could see the story arc and the standard character development that was very well done, but there was so much going on. It gave you this documentary about these oppressed aliens so that you didn't see the plot line developing. So was it good for kids? Absolutely not. <laughs> uh, there is an excessive use of bad language in the movie. I, particularly the F word. Particularly the F word. I, sometimes I think people need to think forward to someday this is going to be an edited for television <laughs> movie. And whoever's watching is going to be like, man, it's kind of like fudge. There was some, some gory stuff in yeah. it. To progress the story, you needed the death. It was part of that world. But we didn't sit there reveling in the decomposing corpses. Right. Yeah, it was, it was dramatic. It was handled well, yeah. but it's still not for kids. Right. So how about spiritual issues? Tolkien said that fantasy is the back door to the heart. You can discuss things in a fantasy realm that you can't discuss in a realistic realm. This movie has these bug-like creatures that you learn to appreciate because life has value. They come right in and they in their mind have devalued this life so it's okay to just kill them and throw them away like trash. And the thing that has started to devalue them is abortion, straight out. They go in, they find babies that are starting to form and they kill them all and they call it abortion. And you see the people who do this every day, totally callous to this death and destruction of innocent children. But even when it's happening the first time, like a lot of movies that bring up issues like this have to show you that, then turn it around so you realize it was bad. The first time you see it, you realize they're sick. They have so allowed themselves into this industrial mindset that they are okay with murdering the most innocent. But then the movie goes further to show you that when you do that, you devalue life itself. And making it in South Africa and making it aliens makes it enough removed from the American mindset that we can be like, oh yeah, I can't imagine doing that for real. But we do. And we do let industry make our decisions, and we do let our government have too much control, and we do let the innocent die. And it does affect the way our entire structure of society works. And it shows that so well. There's a rap artist named John Rubin, and one of his songs make has a difference. The line. Ignorance will be in my disguise, cause 21st century America likes its witchcraft civilized. <laughs> Century America likes its witchcraft civilized. This movie had this whole section that just brought that out because there's a character who is human who is turning into an alien. And his one of his arms is fully alien. The government has alien weapon technology, but it's linked to their genetics, so only an alien can fire it. So they start using the alien man to fire the weaponry. 
and then they want to essentially dissect him alive so that they can use his genes to splice with soldiers or something so that their military can use the weaponry. Later on in the movie, after seeing all that, which sounds so sciency and yes, you see a voodoo gang leader who wants the power of the aliens because he's got a stock of their weapons as well. And he wants the alien power so that he himself can fire the guns. He is going to cut off the arm and eat it. And at first I was like, oh, that's just so gross and brutal. And then you realize that's exactly what the people in the white room in the tall building with the million dollars of equipment and the science lab coats wanted to do as well. They were just doing it more civilized. They were, yeah, they were just as brutal and evil and had no morals and no ethics yes. and they as, wanted, as the gangster on the street. Yes, <laughs> who was influenced by voodoo, and mm -hmm. which I also appreciated that they decided the evil characters could be voodoo high priests and not Christians. That, that was nice to see. <laughs> um, so we have this, first we have the abortion and what it leads to and handled correctly. Then we have this idea of it's all the same immorality whether you're in a lab coat or with a gang. And then, if that wasn't enough, the main human character is a loving husband and his counterpart, the main alien character, is a loving father. By the end, the alien, whose name is Christopher Johnson, alliteration with Christ Jesus, is going to fly off into the heavens and one day he'll return. And when he returns, he will restore the human who's been infected by the aliens. And the symbolism is very simple, yet profound and well done. It really reminded me of the original The Day the Earth Stood Still in a even more beautiful and poetic way. Beyond that, the man who's turning into an alien, he calls his wife and lets, him, lets her know that one day he will return for her. And he fully becomes an alien. She, on the other hand, waits for him. People tell her that he's not going to return. They tell her that he's dead, but she knows because he's left her signs that one day he will return for her. So she lives in a preparation for his return. It's been a very long time since I've seen such a beautiful picture of somebody waiting for the return of Christ. And it's done in such a way that it's a picture of that. It's not making these characters out into alternative Jesuses. They're like Jonah. They are a picture of what we have to hope for, and I think a real encouragement. So what's our recommendation? I would say definitely watch it. If you're expecting a movie that is your stereotypical blockbuster Jerry Bruckheimer film, you may be disappointed, but watch it anyway. I think this is the best movie I've seen since I Am Legend. And I would say go out and watch it. If you have kids below teens, preview it beforehand, maybe even teens. But if it's something they could handle, it would be a great movie to watch with them and discuss the symbolism and discuss the beauty and horror it presents and how it so realistically presents things and so correctly. I think this, in fact I know, this is my second favorite alien film. This comes right next to Signs. It's not quite at Signs, but it's right. close. On YouTube, please click subscribe. On our blog, please click the RSS feed. Yeah. It'd be a we need to have a film festival. If you want to have a Question Entertainment Alien Film Festival, call us up or email us and we'll set it up. This may go against the way I was just talking, but I thought it was very cool that the blood splatters against the camera. Never seen.